Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Sets, Constructions. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to use interval notation to describe a set, give the definitions of set intersection, union, difference, complement, and product, and identify mathematical statements involving intersections, unions, differences, complements, and products. We have two pieces of motivation for this section. The first one is, why are we looking at intervals? Well, intervals are important, simple subsets of the real numbers. They get used to build other, more complicated intervals, and they also show up naturally in things like statistics and computer science and math. Our second motivation is that we will look at these new set operations as way to construct new sets from old sets, and these will be particularly common ones. As it turns out, these will all be related to the logical operations and, or, implies, um, etc. all of those ones. So there's a natural connection between logic and uh, the stuff we're doing with sets. We'll start with the interval definitions. Here are five examples of how you might define intervals. There's the open interval, which is open bracket A, open bracket B, which is all real numbers between A and B, not including the endpoints. This is called an open interval. We use the square brackets if we want to include both endpoints. This is called a closed interval. You can do half open intervals by using one round bracket and one square bracket. And if you want one of the sides to be positive infinity or minus infinity, you would have an open ray. Many other possible combinations um, can be made uh, other than these five, but these five are just to give you an example of things you might use. Now the bulk of this video is to go through these five um, operations for constructing new sets, intersections, union, difference, complement, and Cartesian product. At first, these all sort of look like new symbols that are hard to uh, understand, but we'll try to relate them to things we already know. The first one is intersection. If you have two sets A and B, the intersection of A and B is defined to be all X such that X is in A and X is in B. So it's all X that are in both A and B simultaneously. Equivalently, you might want to write this um, as a statement of what it means for an element to be in the intersection. An element is in the intersection if and only if it's in both A and in B. This will be useful later on when proving things. So the intersection looks like this, by, uh, represented by a Venn diagram. So each circle is, well, the circle on the left is A, the circle on the right is B, and so the red part is the stuff in the middle, that's what's in the intersection. We use these Venn diagrams to help visualize uh, these different set operations, um, and we can use them to help us in proofs, but on their own, they are not proofs. As an example of an intersection, the naturals intersected with open interval 1 to closed pi is the set 2, 3. 1 is not included because uh, even though it's in the naturals, it's not in the interval on the right, and everything above 3 is not included because the interval ends at pi. One special case of intersection is when A intersect B is equal to the empty set. In this case, we say that A and B are disjoint. This means they have no common elements, or they don't share any elements. So for example, the naturals and the closed ray minus infinity to zero, closed, are disjoint sets. There's no numbers that are in both of them simultaneously. Set union is sort of the opposite of intersection. So the union of A and B is defined to be all X such that X is in A or X is in B. Equivalently, X is in the union if and only if X is in A or X is in B. We represent this as follows. As an example, the integers can be written as the naturals, union together just the element zero, union together all negative n, where n is a natural. 
So we get all the positives, zero, and the negatives. Let's do a check-in. Is the logical operator AND related to uh, this U or this upside down U? How? And what about the logical operator OR? This is a common point of confusion for students, but the thing to remember is that the wedge, the AND, uh, is related to the same orientation as the union or, or intersection. In other words, the intersection is the first one, and it's the same orientation as the wedge, as the end. Similarly, the union is the same as or. It's the same orientation as the or. These are how these two things relate. Set difference. So the set difference of A remove B is defined as the set of all X that's in A and not in B. So you take all of the elements of A and you remove anything that shows up in B. So for example, if you take the set, the interval, closed interval one, three, and you remove two, this will be the half open interval one to two, union the half open interval two to three. So you've essentially just removed uh, the element two. The set complement is a little more tricky because it involves the set U. So let A and U be sets. The complement of A with respect to this universal set U is defined as all X that are in U that aren't in A. And this is why we have to introduce this universal set U. If I said um, I want all numbers that aren't three, well, do we mean real numbers? Do we mean integers? Do we mean complex numbers? We need this U to tell us what our scope of our conversation is. Um, and it's usually clear from context. It's usually like the reals or the plane or something like this. But when in doubt, um, express what it is. So an example of this is if we take the universal set U is the reals, then the complement of the interval 1, 3 is minus infinity to 1 closed and open 3 to infinity. Here, if we didn't specify what the universal set was, I think you could still guess what it should be. The complement of an interval should really be inside of the reals. The last one we'll look at today is the Cartesian product. If you have two sets A and B, the Cartesian product of A and B is defined as A cross B, which is the collection of all pairs X, Y, where X is in A and Y is in B. So let me say that again. The Cartesian product is a collection of pairs of elements. All of the four that we looked at previously were points. They were collections of points. The Cartesian product is of a higher dimension. It's a collection of pairs of points where the first coordinate is always from A and the second coordinate is always from B. Let's look at a, a classic example of this, which is the deck of standard playing cards. Here, let's take A to be the set 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, all of the ranks. And let's let B be the collection of suits, diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. So for example, uh, K spades is the pair where the first coordinate is the king, the second coordinate is the suit spades, so this will represent the king of spades. The Cartesian product A cross B will represent always to take a rank and always to take a suit. So it will give us all 52 combinations. Cartesian products show up in other places in math. For example, the xy plane. So our Cartesian product r, which we sometimes represent as r to the two, is the collection of all xy where x is in the reals and y is in the reals. It's the xy plane that we're used to. As an exercise to check your understanding, which of the following sets is the pair one, three, an element of? 
Here we, we really mean the pair, not the interval. Well, it turns out it's in all three of them. If you think that it's not in one of the three, you should reflect on why, and remember that the way you check is that one has to be in the first coordinate and two has to be in the second coordinate or the second set. Let's take some moment to reflect. Is the intersection of two intervals always an interval? What about the union of two intervals? Make a conjecture and then prove it. How can set difference be defined in terms of intersections, unions, and complements? Is A union B equal to B union A? What logical identity or fact does this amount to? In other words, what logical fact do you have to use to prove it? Finally, if A and B are finite, find a formula for the number of elements of A Cartesian product B. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.